In this lesson, we will learn about configuring public domain on internal DNS servers. First of all, we will analyze queries for public DNS records from a device inside a local network, then explain why firewalls allow DNS responses from public DNS servers. Next, we will go through the process of publishing a website to the internet and the issue with accessing the website from inside. After that, we will provide a solution and its related configurations. And finally, we sum up our lesson with the keynotes. In this network, the domain itlifeskills.com is a public registered domain hosted on AT&T DNS server. Now let's analyze the process of how Laptop01 gets the IP address of home.itlifeskills.com. First, Laptop01 sends the query to its DNS server, OPVDC01. OPVDC01 checks in its four lookup zones and it doesn't find any zone for the domain itlifeskills.com. So it checks in its folders and it finds Google DNS server. So it forwards the query to Google DNS server. Let's assume Google DNS server doesn't have the catch for the records home.itlifeskills.com. So it had to perform the iterative queries and finally, it finds AT&T DNS server and it forwards the query to AT&T DNS server. Since AT&T DNS server is the authoritative DNS server of the domain itlifeskills.com, so it answers Google DNS query. Upon receiving the answer, Google DNS server forwards the answer to OPVDC01 and OPVDC01 forwards the answer to Laptop01. That is how Laptop01 gets the IP address of home.itlifeskills.com as 3.22.152.147. In this network, the firewall is configured to allow only outgoing traffic from the internal network to the internet. The question is thus, why Google DNS can respond to OPBDC01 DNS queries via the firewall? The answer is that the firewall is a stateful firewall. Here is how it works. To send DNS queries to Google DNS server, OPVDC01 must initiate a section to the firewall. Upon receiving the DNS query package at its public interface, the firewall added the public IP address to the package as the source IP address. So the package has the source IP address is the public IP address of the firewall and the destination is Google DNS IP address. And the firewall forward the package to Google DNS. Because it is stateful, the firewall can keep track of the section. Now, when Google DNS forward the answer to OPVDC01, the answer packet gets to the public interface of the firewall. The firewall check the packets and finds the source is the public IP address of Google DNS and the destination is its public IP address. So it figure the packets coming from the same section that it kept earlier. That's why the firewall forwards the answer to OPVDC01. So Google DNS can send the answers to OPVDC01 only when 
on PVDC01 initiate a section with the firewall first. A new web server, OPV Web 01, is placed inside the network, hosting the website sales.itlifeskills.com. Let's see how to publish the website to the internet. To do that, at the firewall, we need to configure a NAT rule to map the private IP address of the web server to a public IP address, for example, 70.42.35.18. And we need to configure the firewall to allow HTTPS traffic coming from any IP addresses to the public IP address, 70.42.35.18. And on the AT&T DNS server, we need to add a new record, sales.itlifeskills.com to point to the public IP address. That's how we publish the website to the internet. Now let's analyze the process how Laptop01 accesses sales.itlifeskills.com from the internet. First, Laptop01 query is DNS server, which is Google DNS, and finds the IP address of sales.itlifeskills.com is 70.42.35.18. And Laptop01 will try to connect to the website using the IP address 70.42.35.18 using HTTPS protocol. When the package reaches the public interface of the firewall, the firewall check and figure out the source of the package is the public IP address of the laptop and the destination is 70.42.35.18, which is mapped to 10.10.0.101 in its NAT rule. And the protocol is HTTPS. So by following this rule, it will allow the traffic and forward the packets to OPV Web 01. That is how Laptop 01 can access the website sales.itlifeskills.com from the internet. Now let's analyze the process how Laptop01 accesses the website sales.itlifeskills.com from inside the network. First, Laptop01 will query its DNS server, which is OPVDC01, and it finds the IP address of sales.itlifeskills.com as the public IP address 70.42.35.18. So Laptop01 will connect to the website using the public IP address via the HTTPS protocol. So the packets get routed to the firewall. And depending on the firewall configuration, the firewall can drop the packets right away or forward the packets to the ISP router. If the packets get forwarded to the ISP router, the ISP router will check the destination of the packets and it knows that it have to forward the packets back to the firewall. Upon checking the packets, the firewall knows that it received the same package. It either drop the packets right away or it may check the NAT rule and knows that it has to route the packets to OPV Web 01. However, before forwarding the packets, it figured out that the packets coming from inside going to the public interface and trying to access the resource from inside, and it is illegal and it will drop the package, which means Laptop 01 can never 
access the website sales.itpipeskills.com from inside the network. The solution for laptop 01 to access sales.itlifeskills.com from the internal network is to create a new zone itlifeskills.com on our PVDC01, then create a record for sales.itlifeskills.com 2.2 10.10.0.101 now when laptop 01 query opvdc01 it will get the ip address 10.10.0.101 for the record sales.itlifeskills.com and laptop 01 will access the website sales.itlifeskills.com directly The internal DNS server OPVDC01 now becomes the authoritative DNS server for itlifeskills.com, which means it only uses the records created in the itlifeskills.com zone to answer the queries from all the devices connected to the internal network. OPVDC01 will not query other DNS server to find the answer. If it doesn't find the answer in its records, then it will return to the query with an error message. Therefore, OPVDC01 must have the same records created on the public DNS server with AT&T, but point to the correct IP addresses, which means if the resources hosted on the server inside the network, the records must point to the private IP address. And if the resources hosted on the internet, the records must point to the public IP address. So to allow internal computers to access home.itlifeskills.com, we have to create the A records for home .itlifeskills.com to point to the public IP address on the internal DNS server OPVDC01. This is the end of this lesson. Let's read the keynotes.